You know, sometimes as an engineer, it seems that people think that you can just fix anything, uh, like a uh, control board out of a slot machine from the 90s. And uh, I think this is actually kind of cool here. If you look at this board, there's not a single surface mount component here. And uh, I thought it'd make kind of a cool video to show you this repair. So I actually fixed this uh, once before a couple years back. And uh, this is a slot machine that sits in somebody's basement. And I uh, forget what error code it was throwing up. But uh, when we pulled the board out, I immediately noticed the battery here, took a meter to it, and saw that it was dead. So that was a pretty easy fix. Just swapped it out with a new one from eBay, and uh, they were good to go. But now here we are a couple years later, tested the battery again, and sure enough, it is dead. So I thought, because now I've got the board here on my bench, we could take a closer look and see if there's maybe a better fix. And I'd like to think that I'm that good where I can just look at a board and immediately know how it works and figure out what's wrong with it, but I'm not. So let's first see if there is some kind of schematic we can find. So this is totally crazy, and I want to show you this. I'm going to back up here and show you what I googled. Slot machine MPU board schematic. And the first hit is for this exact board. So you see here MPU board AS3356-201. Bingo, MPU board AS3356-201. I mean, this never happens. It's the exact model, exact board. So this is actually gonna be pretty cool because we'll be able to go through and see exactly what this battery is powering up and what would happen if, for example, like I was thinking maybe we just bypass the battery out completely. Maybe it's not even really needed for anything important. So right here on the first page of the schematic, we actually see the battery right here. And when I fixed this at uh, a couple years ago, I didn't have my tools and I was using a big soldering iron and actually lifted the pad up by accident. So I had to solder the positive lead over to this jumper here, JW12. I just kind of followed the trace on over. And uh, you can see what's going on here. Um, the battery voltage is diode ored with the 5 volts. This is the system 5 volt power that comes from the back plane. And uh, when you don't have the 5 volts, you are going to have the battery voltage here essentially on VBB. So this is the battery backed rail here. So we would probably want to go through and see what is all powered by that battery voltage and see if there's anything in there that's important. But also to the right here, you can see where the battery voltage is monitored. So we've got this comparator set up here, which sends a high low signal back to the processor VBB bad, which I was thinking maybe we could just, you know, remove the battery altogether, jump over this diode here so that when you have five volts, when you're powered up, you will just have five volts here, which would be totally fine. And then you would always see that you've got good battery voltage. But eh, maybe there's a better way of doing this. Let's see. And you know what I was thinking with this slot machine? They probably didn't ever think that this battery would be powering this VBB rail for very long because, you know, in most casinos where these slot machines are installed, they're probably always powered on, you know, for the most part. Uh, but not in somebody's basement. So in this use case here, the slot machine, you know, sitting in a basement forever, hardly ever powered on, the battery probably actually drains pretty quickly here. And I could hook up my source measure unit right here. I'll remove the battery and I could actually see what this standby current is, but uh, we'll see if we have time. Okay, and just jumping back up for a second here, I did notice here in the block diagram that the battery backup does keep some RAM alive for something, you know, maybe some kind of settings, you know, I don't know, maybe some scores, uh, usage, you know, like how many spins, maybe some maintenance stuff, preventative stuff, you know, who knows. And then also it does something here with the door switch latch, which makes sense for a slot machine, you know, like if somebody pulled power on it, you'd probably want to know if the door was ever opened while power was removed so that when you power back up, you can go check this and see if somebody was doing something. And you know what, these old schematics here, a lot of times what they do is don't show you the power pins. Like look at this IC here, U10. You don't see any VCC, VDD, or anything like that. So what they do instead is show you that over here with the bypass caps. 
So every single one of these is reference match to the IC for where it's located. So for example, here BP68 is the bypass cap for U68. So you know that U68 would have VBJ connected to it. And I noticed up here on the memory page, you've got VBB here connected uh, to a pull-up resistor here and it's jumpered over to VBJ. So there is some RAM here on this sheet that is connected to uh, these nets. So let's go and figure that out. Yeah, so VBB, VBJ powers one, two, three, four, five ICs. U43, 72, 73, 67, and 68. So let's go hunt those down and see what they do. So U43 is kind of an interesting one. It's uh, these little inverters here, the 74 HCO5. And you see we got A, B, C, and D. So this is uh, kind of interesting. So they're keeping those up, which are all part of the reset circuitry in here, which may just be that they want to power up the reset in a known state, uh, to maybe to prevent some kind of race condition. You know, if you're powering up your reset at the same time you're powering up your board, what if something in here is stuck one way or another? And maybe if we look uh, at this a little closer, that'll make more sense. But that does seem kind of important to power up or at least maintain power to uh, in the system. So let's keep looking at other ICs. All right, U72 was the other one and you see VBB powers this guy. And this is responsible for monitoring the door hinge switch. So it's a little flip-flop in there, which will hold that state so that it can monitor it, but not really important for what we're doing, so we wouldn't really care if that lost power. Uh, this is cool. U73 is uh, DS1202. DS, Dallas Semiconductor, now owned by Maxims. They still make really good uh, real-time clocks. That's actually right over here on the board. You can tell because you see the little 32 kilohertz crystal sticking out of the board right there. And that makes sense to keep time while you're powered down. Uh, but in our case, you know, we don't really care. And then those last two ICs, they're U67, U68, are to keep these two RAM chips alive, or what they call, I guess, the safe RAM. And again, who knows what that RAM is, but maybe it's important to keep that RAM even while powered down. You know, and just by skimming through here, I noticed uh, a lot of cool stuff. That's what I like looking at these these old designs, you know, like Right here, they're doing something with a, a zero cross circuit here, you know, maybe for timing to keep something. So they're bringing AC in, which is obviously stepped down off of the main uh, line input, but also down here, they're detecting when the AC goes down as well. So maybe, you know, if they detect a power fail, yeah, they can quickly load memory or, uh, out of RAM into flash or do whatever they need to do so and you know I, I look at a lot of these old circuits because you know they're hardened they're proven you know this board is still running from the 90s and uh, I may keep this in my back pocket for a future design so you know based on this you know what I think I'm gonna do I've got five volts sitting right there uh, I know that I could put a full size, you know, modern day uh, lithium battery here, a 4.2 volt cell, because it is diode ored with the 5 volts, so I know 4.2 wouldn't do anything uh, harmful to the, the board. Um, so I might put a lithium battery in here, but charge it off of the 5 volts. And uh, I have all of these parts laying around, so maybe I'll just do that and be done with this job. Yeah, so I've got a ton of these 1,000 milliamp hour lithium batteries. And then I bought a ton of these little uh, charger things, which will take 5 volts input and then put my battery right there. And that's it. I think this that's all I need to do. So I'm just editing this video and I just found something else that's kind of interesting in this schematic. When you look up here at the block diagram, you may notice this little block here for an EMI antenna. And uh, I don't have the board in front of me now, but I did notice a trace on there labeled antenna, which is kind of weird too, because you wouldn't think a board like this would have any kind of RF on it whatsoever. I mean, maybe modern day slot machines, but something from the 90s, maybe not. And uh, I certainly didn't see any RF module or radio or anything here on the board. So what is this all about and why would you call it an EMI antenna? 
So I looked right here and I see where that antenna comes into the circuit, which is very interesting. You see antenna PC trace. And this is definitely not a radio front end. So what are they doing here? Well, if you follow it through, you see we got some clamping diodes. Uh, we've got a diode here to then go through, which kind of looks like an AM radio style, you know, kind of receiver. And then it, that feeds into a comparator. But the output here is the interesting piece. You see, we've got the reset button on the front end, uh, or the front panel of the slot machine board. And then that here, so that means the output of the comparator actually drives the reset line, the master reset line for the entire system. So then the question is, is why do you have an EMI detector on this board? And what I was thinking is, Possibly this is another anti-tamper kind of measure so that if somebody were to go up to this slot machine with some kind of strong uh, electromagnetic interference of some kind, thinking that they could, you know, position the wheels, you know, as there's turning, maybe you pulled a big giant magnet of some kind up to it, um, you could control where the slot machine stops. So what this does is it will detect that strong electromagnetic interference and hold the machine in reset. So that's kind of a clever way of, uh, of detecting that. But anyway, this is just my thoughts. And uh, anyway, back to the video. All right, so I'm gonna take this battery out of there first. And I'm gonna put the new battery in last. So we'll just start by putting this board in somewhere here. So maybe I'll put the charger like right here, the battery. I'll put some heat shrink and then just like double side tape it right to the top of that IC. And then just run ground and power over to the five volt and ground test points over in the, the bottom right corner. Okay, I got the charger board in there now, and you see its outputs going to the battery terminals there, and then the power input right over there from the ground and VCC, and VCC is 5 volts on this board. Okay, next up I'm going to do the battery, but I'm going to do this one lead at a time. Alright, now i got to be really careful because I'm going to have to attach this battery into this system live just so I don't have solder like draped across this board I cut a tiny piece off here so now I just got to clean all of this up and uh, should be good to go okay got the charger board all wrapped up with capped on tape now I'm gonna put a little bit of VHB tape underneath it and then stick it right to the board All right, that looks pretty good. Now I just gotta figure out where I'm gonna mount this battery. I'm thinking like maybe up there somewhere. You know, maybe over here. Should probably, well, these are all just 74HC logic chips. Just don't wanna put it next to anything that's like gonna get warm. Yeah, actually right there looks pretty good. Put it right there. Well, not the prettiest thing in the world, but that should work. So now we have a, a battery-backed board that will automatically recharge when you have AC power applied. So the same problems could still exist where, you know, if it sits uh, not powered for a long period of time, this battery will eventually die and then throw that error code. But the good news is that all you would have to do is power it back on, leave it on for a little bit to recharge the battery, power cycle it again and then it should go back to uh, to normal working order okay so uh, last thing I want to do now is test this thing out I'm gonna apply 5 volts over here and make sure the battery charges disconnect and then make sure that we have VBB on the board alright so I got the meter out now and we can take a look first before applying 5 volts to see if the VBAT is on the uh, VBB and VBJ rail 
So on the schematic, we saw that little jumper J14 here, which jumped the VBB over to VBJ. So that's what we'll use to check this. So there's a little ground test point over there. First looking at the VBAT. So they received four volts, so that's good. And then if I can get in to this jumper. So there we see 3.78. Now remember, this is after a, a diode because it's ORed with the 5 volts. So right now we do not have AC power or the 5 volts applied to the board. Uh, so we only see that 3.78. So now let's apply the 5 volts and see what happens. Wow, this thing pulls like 2 amps, which is pretty high. So uh, right away we see that the charge board here, we've got the red LED, so we know we're charging the battery, so that's good. I'm also gonna let this sit for a while just to make sure that this does successfully go to a uh, fully charged. And now let's just take a look here and see if we have five volts now at J14. Okay, there it is, 4.7 volts after the diode dropped, so that's good. And there's our 4.12 charge voltage to the battery. Okay, cool, so uh, that all looks good. I think this thing's uh, ready. I'll let it charge up and then we'll take it over, reinstall it in the slot machine and make sure everything works. And you know, the only concern I have now is this little charger board. I think it charges this at uh, 500 milliamps, but uh, I just hope that the power supply feeding this board has enough juice to also handle the charge current. It should. I mean, that's really not that much. So uh, we'll see. We'll take it over there and, and check it out. Okay, so just installed the board back into the slot machine here and had a uh, Fault 83, which is the RAM or safe RAM error, which we saw that the VBAT uh, was powering up. So... It's kind of cool that it can detect if you do have a RAM error and in order to reset that there's a little jumper in there that uh, is on the board it's labeled a RAM reset jumper and I had to power the machine on while holding the test and pseudo button here and then I got a clear uh, message up on the screen uh, it's powered back off remove the jumper powered back on and now we're in business so let's see if this thing works Okay, there we go. Let's put some. Uh, wait for it. Oh, there we go. I got a little bit. There we go. I'll edit this out. Time is all up. Okay, bet max. We're good. And. First spin with the new board in, no winner. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, cool, I won something. Then cash credit, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> and the slot machine is now working. <laughs>